This is a beginner friendly tutorial and you are going to be making a marble cake at home. And I'm pretty sure once you watch this episode to the end, you'll be able to make a very simple but yummy cake. And with me here, I have my list of ingredients and I have some margarine. You can also use butter. I have my self-freezing flour. I have some cocoa powder. I have my eggs, vanilla essence, some milk and some sugar. And without further ado, let's get started. So as I mentioned, this is such an easy recipe and we're going to start by blooming our cocoa and that simply means mixing our cocoa powder with some milk. I'm going to warm about a tablespoon of milk, then I'll be back. Now that my milk is warm, I'm going to add it in here. Then that's going to help our cocoa powder dissolve faster. Then I'm going to mix this. Then, uh, I'm going to set this aside and let's start baking. For this recipe, you need half a cup of margarine and I'm slightly going to beat it, then I'll add in my sugar. After beating it for about 30 seconds, I'll go in with my sugar. And for the sugar, you can add as much or as little as you prefer. For my recipe, I've used 3 tablespoons of sugar, but you can also add more. And just to mention, this is not a tablespoon. Neither is this. But this is a tablespoon when it comes to baking. So, I've added 3 tablespoons of sugar, but you can also add more. Then I'm going to mix this till everything is well combined. If at all you do not have a whisk, you can also use the hand whisk or you can also use a mwiko. That will also work. I've been mixing this for about two minutes and everything is well combined. So I'll go in with my eggs one at a time. And you have to make sure that each egg is well incorporated before you add the other one because this is where you end up baking kiki in a cow gali and that's not what you want. So I'm going to add in one egg at a time and I'm using two eggs for this particular recipe. I'll go in with my second egg. And also make sure that everything is at room temperature. Now that everything is well combined, you can see that at the edges could have this lump of uh, margarine and we want to mix that. So make sure you scrape your sides. And also make sure that you reach at the bottom. Then I'm also going to add in my vanilla at this point. And just as I mentioned, this is not a teaspoon, this is a teaspoon. Because let me demonstrate, as you can see, this is one teaspoon of vanilla essence. But when it comes to measuring, uh, you can see that in a bakia mingi na kuna nye ime wagika hapa. So, uh, you should not use this as a teaspoon. You can buy this set for around 150 to 200 shillings anywhere in the CBD. And then I'm going to incorporate this. Then I'm going to go in with my flour. I'm using one and a half cups of flour, and as you've seen, I have leveled my cup of flour. You should not heap it, kama ya ugali. Then I'm going to add it in three batches and I'm going to be using milk as well. So the amount of milk that you add to your recipe totally depends on how moist you want your cake. Uh, if at all you want a, moist, a very moist cake, add more milk. If at all you want a cake on the drier side, uh, you can also leave out on the milk. And this is half a cup, but I'm not going to be using all of it. Uh, and I'm going to add it in two rounds and my flour in three rounds. Then I'll do that, then I'll add some more. Then finally, 
I'll go in with my flour. Then also remember to scrape the sides and I've gone in with about one that cup of uh, room temperature milk and also reach to the bottoms. Then uh, the work of the mixer is done and you can see we have this beautiful butter. Then also ensure that you taste your butter. Mm, it tastes delicious and that simply means our end product is going to be delicious as well. Mm. And since we are making a marble cake or a zebra cake, you're going to need an extra container and I'm going to divide my butter in the ratio of 2 is to 3. So uh, the 3 is going to be for the white and the 2 is going to be for the chocolate. But I'm simply eyeballing. But if at all you have a wing scale, you can also use that. Hmm. Yeah, so I think that is a good ratio. Then remember our chocolate that we set aside. Uh, this is where it comes in. And we are going to mix it with our white uh, butter. And we are simply going to mix to combine this. Also, just to mention, the amount of cocoa powder totally depends with how deep you want your brown to be. I'm going to add just a little bit more and a little bit more milk. So you can see the importance of mixing it with some hot milk. This has taken longer to mix and you can see that there are also some pockets of cocoa powder and that can be avoided by adding some hot milk or warm milk. So this is just a perfect color and I've used two and a half tablespoons of cocoa powder. Then I'm going to be using this as my baking tin and this is a six and a half inch tin. Then I'm going to line it with some parchment paper but if at all you do not have a parchment paper I'll show you what you can do in, in just a few. Then I'm going to fold that into halves, quarters and eighths. Then the smaller you make your triangle are uh, the more perfect your circle is going to be then i think that's okay then you see this middle part you're going to align it like that then we are going to we are going to cut like that and then when you unfold you should have a perfect circle yep so if at all you do not have a parchment paper uh you can plane your baking tin with some Margarine, then you just dip with some flour. So, after laying it with some margarine like this, uh, you can dust it with some flour. But since I have a parchment paper, I'm just going to add it like this. I do not need to add some uh, flour. Then we will start by adding this in here and this is how we make that zebra effect like that then you add the same amount of cocoa uh, mixture like that to the center then we continue
Then I'm going to proceed to bake this in an oven that has been preheating at 170 degrees till when you insert a toothpick at the center, it comes out clean. So I cannot really specify all the amount of time because uh, some will tend to use a smaller baking tin and that will take longer to cook and someone else will use a broader tin and that will take a short amount of time to cook. So this is the test I was talking about and this is how you know your cake is well done. Insert a toothpick at the center or a fork and it comes out clean. Then uh, I've let my cake rest for about 10 minutes and well, you can see how easily that comes out and because we lined our tin with some parchment paper you can see that it's also clean and uh, yup so I'm going to let this rest for about an hour so that you can cool down completely then I'll be back for tasting and eating As you've seen, it was that easy preparing this marble cake and I hope you're going to give it a try and let's give this a taste test. Hmm, hmm, hmm. This is delicious. Hmm, hmm. Hmm. I start mine with um, tea. And for tomorrow's breakfast and the next day, I know I'm sorted because I have this. Hopefully, it will be Let's continue giving this a taste test. You can see how beautiful it is. I hope you enjoyed, I also hope you learned something new and I also hope that you are going to try this simple recipe. Don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe if you haven't and I will see you in my next one. Bye.